In one of the previous videos, I have shown you how to create an automated content block using Airtable, OpenAI and Webflow, starting from the generating ideas for your blog post to creating complete blog posts that are ready to be published to your website. In the video today, I'll show you what to do in case you don't like the images generated by OpenAI DALI model and you would like to replace them with a good old school stock images. So minimalistic design. Okay, this looks good. Let's take this one. All right, let's see how that's done. Hi, I'm Greg from Business Automated and today I'll talk about additional feature that we have added to the content block generation scenario that I have shown in a previous video. You can see the link to this video and to this database in the card somewhere on this on this video or in the description below. And this scenario basically allows you to generate your blog posts based on your business profile and create ideas and then also create full blog posts for those ideas. So OpenAI ChatGPT would generate the idea for you and it would also generate the full blog post and so on. So you can see like how we are converting this into a full blog post and you can watch the video and you can also download this, this base and you can download the, the templates that I'm having here from the link to the Gumroad that is also attached below, but I'll just quickly show you some of the changes we have added to this model and how now we have also enabled this to use chat GPT-4 if you already have access to it and I just wanted to quickly show the, the changes added here and then we'll go back to adding images from Pexels. All right, so you can see that this scenario has been generated and versus the original video that we had the main difference was that now we have enabled this to use the chat completions. The chat completions versus the old prompt completions are, first of all, cheaper and they allow you a little bit more flexibility in, in terms of how you design the, the prompts. So the main difference is basically how this is structured because in the older version of this scenario, we were basically using a prompt completion, which was just a one single prompt. So what um, we have done here in this updated scenario, it works the same. We have just split out that prompt into proper roles to inform ChatGPT4 or ChatGPT3.5 what is the system role, so like how it is supposed to be behaving. And then your user input is coming here. So this is the information to the ChatGPT that, hey, this is some context about our business and this is the type of blog post that I would like to generate for you and this is based on this idea. And then also some technical things uh, that say respond with a long article with multiple paragraphs and so on. And you can see that this is sort of fundamentally different approach versus purely using the prompt uh, GPT 3.5 model. So, and it's also cheaper. So that's the, that's the difference that you are charged um, about 10 times less per per token used. Obviously, you're using a little bit more tokens here, but you end up uh, being better off. And at the moment, uh, if you would like to download this, uh, this template, this template is using GPT 3.5. But if you already have access to it, like I have over here, you can change it over to GPT uh, 4, which has as I have tested nicer quality of prompts and um, and really is a little bit more comprehensive in terms of what it, uh, how it replies and reacts to your comments and so on. But anyway, so this is the major difference to that scenario and that previous scenario that I was, I was showing to you. And here we are using chat GPT-4, all of these are GPT-3.5, all of these are the chat completions. Here at the end, we are using DALI model to generate images based on the description of the idea based of the style. So we said the style of the New York, New Yorker magazine illustrations and so on. And you can see when we come back to what was generated, maybe this is a little bit more suggested by the word New York. So, okay, we are not liking those. Uh, I'm not liking those images. I would not use them for my, for my blog. And this was also some of the comments we got that at the moment, um, maybe if you better engineer the prompt. So if you would go back over here and kind of fine tune the prompt a bit better, you might get better, better results. Uh, but sometimes maybe you want to have also an option 
to just be able to get an actual image. So this is how we have created this additional button over here. And this button works following way. So if we would like to substitute this with actual image, it makes a search with Pexels API. Pexels is a website that allows you to use images for free. So there is lots of, if you have not seen this website before, so there is lots of independent photographers that basically provide the images over here and they're all free of charge to use. The, their license is completely free to use and there's no attribution required and so on. And, you know, there's a couple of restrictions that you should take take a look at but basically this is something that you could use instead of the AI generated images so you can see I have clicked on the link over here and it's actually showing me images directly from from Pexels and it's showing me a couple of things that is matching the idea description of the blog and how this is happening okay so this is going to be quite interesting we're also using OpenAI and ChatGPT to actually help us even generate them the prompts. So the first step will start over here is that we have a specific search button. So if you take a look at the button over here, so let's open it. You can see here that in the settings over here, what we have is if the idea exists, so because the idea is a necessary input for the scenario, if the idea exists, then we will show this webhook with the record ID. And I'll show you in a second how to generate this webhook. If the description does not exist, then we will show error. So if there's no description, that's why this is sort of disabled. So if you see, if we copy the description over here, this will show up. Now, where do we get the webhook and what it does? So to create the webhook, we are using a scenario inside of Integromat, uh, inside of make.com, previously named Integromat. And you see this is quite interesting scenario and it does a couple of things. So, But I will try to explain to you this step by step. So the first element that we do, we basically create a new webhook over here. And once you create the new webhook, once you add the webhook over there, then you will be given this URL address. So basically we copy that URL address over here and we go back to our blog scenario and then this is something that you would replace here in the database if you choose to download the, the template from the link below. Uh, also if you would like to download this template as well as the chat GPT completion template this is all in the link below but I'll just walk you through it if you would like to build it yourself. So the next step that we do once we get that URL from here now we create another element just to make it a little bit easier for us in the next step and we set a variable which is called webhook url we copy paste here the variable that we have gotten from the first step here in between we are having a, a fallback and the reason for that fallback actually this is missing over here like the record needs to exist so what we need to have like if there's some record id if it exists then we continue if it does not exist so that we don't run this scenario within without any data and now let me show you sort of the first main scenario which will be the branch in the middle and the branch in the middle will be executed when the following criteria are met and the criteria are record ID and then the chosen image property does not exist and the search query property does not exist. This will become a little bit clearer later and once we go through that what we go here is if this is the main scenario would mean that the old search query which is another parameter does not exist. You also understand this a little bit later once you see the URL if that parameter exists, if the old search query exists, then we will execute the branch below. But if nothing exists, so let me just show you this basic example here. So you can see the only parameter here in the URL is the record ID. So that means we have went through this route over here. And we are also using here OpenAI. And what OpenAI ChatGPT is doing we are just saying the system role, you are a helpful assistant. And then the user role is help us create a keywords for search in Pexels to search for images that would match the following article. 
just give one random idea because it tends to be providing multiple multiple ideas or the list of ideas so now the next step that we do is to create HTTP request and here inside of the authorization you would have to input your API key and then the next the next step would be to add the message content from the previous step so basically the the, the query from the previous step and how many images per page you would like to see so you can set it to 10 20 and so on so this is the sort of basic scenario here this is the url of the pexels uh, search api now let's go back to pexels and you would have to go to pexels.com slash api and here you will have to sign up and create your own api key so this will be a long string of characters once you have it you can co come back to make.com and insert it here and now there's a little bit of magic that happens at the end is that instead of returning a regular response we are actually returning an html website and this website contains data from our request to Pexos. It also contains the webhook URL so that we can come back to this page when we press buttons on the page, as well as contains the old search query so that you can see what was the search query that, that we are having over here. So that gives you a little bit of idea what this one is searching for. And the rest, there is like a couple of logic elements and so on. And those logic elements allow us to do following, following thing. So when you are here on the gallery, maybe you don't like that prompt. Maybe you would like to ask AI to kind of come up with a different prompt. So you click search again with AI. And now there will be another route that is executed. It, based on the same concept, it just gave you a different idea for keywords. So you can try this a couple of times and it will come back with different ideas for the same article and so on. So we're still searching for, I believe, that minimalistic logo design trends, right? So minimalistic logo design trends, bold typography trends, I think that makes, makes a lot of sense, but you can also override it with your own prompt. So if you decide like, oh, I don't like it, I just want bold typography and that's it. You can do that search yourself. So now it has overridden the search and you can actually see that this added our own search query over here. So this is how the make scenario recognizes that like, oh, if there is a search query, if there is a user typed search query, if this exists, that means we will take this to Pexels API and as a query, we will pass the user search query that comes from here. So this is more of a technical implementation detail. And based on that, we will display the results with a page that basically the, the framework of the page is the same, is showing different data that is underneath. Or if you ask to regenerate with search again, you will see that this will actually follow the, the middle route and it will execute the bottom branch over here. Because we have an old search query parameter means that we are passing the previous query into the model. This means when we are generating the new query over here, we're also asking OpenAI chat GPT-4 saying like, okay, so this was the old query that you have provided as a role assistant and the user question is give me one more idea. So this is how we get one more idea that is being passed over to Pexels and then presented to us in response. And finally, what is happening is once we decide that, okay, maybe we like that or maybe it just looks for cat picture why not it's always good to have a cat picture fantastic so let's select this cat over here once we click on it actually what is being executed is one more branch and this branch is being executed because chosen image link exists and we go back to Airtable and we basically update that particular row with the image that we have uh, selected. And it's fairly quickly to get a couple of different image ideas and so on. Look at um, the results and quickly insert this into your Airtable so that you can use it into the rest of the workflow with the blog. All right, so that's it, that's everything. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments and then please like and subscribe if you'd like to follow for more business automation videos. Have a good day, guys, bye. Thank you.